Hey guys, in today's video, let's create a sci-fi tire just as a fun, quick exercise. So to get the tire going, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert a, uh, let's insert this ring 3D. I'm gonna grab my sphere that I don't need. I'm just gonna delete it. And this is what I have. All right, uh, what I would like to do is let me turn on my polyframe and let me inflate this a couple times. Now I have this kind of a thick looking tire effect, right? What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go to Z Modeler and let's create something uh, interesting, some kind of uh, marks on the tire. So to do this, I'm gonna hover over uh, any one of these faces, press spacebar. Uh, let me go to, let's go to poly group and let's do a poly loop. And now with the poly loop selected, let's just simply um, click on any one of these faces. Uh, and you see there's like a little orange line. I'm going to make sure it's pointing uh, up. All right, and now with this selected, let me skip three and I'm gonna go ahead and click on uh, the next one. So I have three in between, right? So let's just very quickly go around and click on every, uh, every third one. All right, once you're done, you should see something similar to this. Uh, nice, let's hover over one of these, press spacebar, let's go to extrude and let's do polygroup all. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna literally just pull this out and create this really interesting effect. You can pull it in if you want. Uh, decide what type of tire you want. Do you want to pull this in or pull it out? In my case, I think I'm gonna pull this out just a little bit. And essentially that is going to be the beginning starting point of my tire. I'm gonna jump out of polyframe. And now if I press Control D a few times, uh, you can see I have something like this. I can see that this is gonna be the front of my uh, little tire. So I'm gonna grab my move, hold down the Shift key, and I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees, all right? Uh, this is what I have. I'm gonna grab my scale and make it just a little bit wider. I do want my tire to be nice and wide. All right, awesome. Next, let's insert a cylinder. I'm gonna grab my move, hold down the Shift key, and rotate this also 90 degrees. I'm also going to uh, scale this down just a little bit, and I'm also gonna scale this in. All right, if I wanted to remove this shape from this one, um, I can do a Boolean. So what I could do is I can press Control D a few times to subdivide this. Let's just make sure it's uh, somewhat uh, thick, right? Let's go ahead and click on this little button, subtraction button, and let's click on Live Booleans. And now we can see what we are left with. All right, at this point, with the cylinder being inside and being subtracted, I can grab my scale and kind of pull this in. And by doing that, it's gonna give me this really interesting effect, which I like a lot, and I think it's gonna be uh, awesome for like a sci-fi tire. Next, let's insert another cylinder and do the same thing. I'm gonna hold down the Shift key, rotate it 90 degrees, scale it in just a little bit, and put it inside uh, inside this tire. All right, I wanna do more, uh, more work on it, so I'm gonna go to Solo, jump into Polyframe, and what I would like to do is I'm going to go to Z Modeler. And now let's just delete some of these edges. I'm going to hover over um, this edge here, go to Delete, and let's do Edge Loop Complete. And now with the Active Symmetry turned on, we can very quickly click on these and delete all of these uh, extra edges. Now I have something like this. I'm going to go to Extrude, hover over a face, uh, go to Extrude. Let's do a Poly Loop. Let's grab this entire loop and just pull this out. Now I have something like this. Let's jump out of the solo mode and then we can see what that looks like. Uh, turn the polyframe off, grab my move, and I can just scale this down just a little bit so it doesn't interfere with my tire. I can, of course, uh, subdivide it, but first let's go to geometry and let's click on crease borders. Now we can do control D, subdivide this a few times, and now we have created something really interesting and smooth. Let's do a quick BPR and take a look. Um, awesome, let's just continue. I'm gonna go back to my sub tool. I'm gonna insert another cylinder, grab my move, hold on the shift key, and rotate this one 90 degrees as well. Make this a little bit smaller and definitely wider. And this is gonna be kind of the inside part of the, uh, of the wheel. We can, of course, also uh, decide um, how big we want the inner part to be, but I'm looking for something like this. All right, to do more work, let's go ahead and click on polyframe. Let's solo it for a minute 
let's uh, go to Z modeler, hold on the old key and first turn uh, active symmetry on. Hold on the old key and let's just select all of these faces here, right? And that's going to be selected on both sides. All right, next I'm going to hover over this face. I'm in polygon actions. I'm going to do inset a single poly and let's just create an inset uh, going inside. So something along these lines I think is great. If I wanted to pull all of these in, I can of course hold on the old key, make a selection, go to extrude. Let's do single poly and it's literally just push this in a little bit. I can also uh, scale this in as well. I'm going to hover over this face, press space bar. Let me go to scale. All right, and let's just scale this in. But uh, before I scale it, I do want to scale it as poly group all, but not the mesh center. I want to go ahead and do local symmetry and just do something like this. Uh, really nice. Let's jump out of polyframe, jump out of solo. And now uh, we have a good looking wheel. Let's add a few more details to this. I'm going to go back to polyframe. Let's go ahead and solo it. And if we wanted to add some more cool effects, let's hover over this polygon. Let's go to inset. Let's switch this to um, poly group all and we'll do inset each poly. And now what I could do is I can create uh, something like this. All right, let's press alt and select all of these polygons inside going all the way around. And with these being selected, again, active symmetry is on, so we know it's on both sides. We can, for example, push them in. Let's go to extrude. We'll do single poly, and let's literally just push this, uh, push them in and create something like this. I'm going to jump out of polyframe, jump out of solo, and take a look. All right, I think that's really cool. If I wanted to do more, let's subdivide it. But before we subdivide it, if you just press Control D right now, you can see it's going to be somewhat of a mess. We don't want to do that. Let's go to geometry and let's click on crease. And now if we do control D, uh, it's going to give us a much nicer result. Uh, very cool. If I wanted to do more, I can, of course, go to sub tools. This time, let's go ahead and insert a box. And one thing I can do is I'm going to scale this box down a lot. I'm going to scale it in. And I'm also going to scale it this way. And this is going to allow me to create uh, an additional detail inside uh, inside my little cylinder. All right, if I wanted to make more of them, I can, of course, hold on the control key, drag this up and release the control key and make a couple more. Let's say I want to do four. I'll do control and drag to get rid of my mask and move this back down. And let's say I want to keep them maybe somewhere in the center. Uh, very cool. Let's continue. Uh, next, let's insert some IMM brushes. I'm going to press Alt, select this shape here. Let me go into my brushes, press I. Let's go into IMM machine parts. And now if we press M, we can see our options. If I wanted to select something like this dial 01, I can do that. And now what I could do is if let's say I want to insert a shape uh, right in, in here. Well, in order for me to insert it, I can't have subdivision levels, so I do need to do, uh, go to geometry and delete lower. Now it's going to allow me to insert a uh, shape anywhere I want on the cylinder. Let's say I want to do more than just one. One thing I could do is turn on something called radial sym symmetry. If I press R, you'll see that now I have this radial symmetry activated with the radial count turn to eight. Let's say I want to do more. Let's do something like uh, 14. Uh, very nice. Now what I could do is I can just start dragging it and you can see all 14 will be dragged on the surface at the same time. I could choose the scale of them. And of course I can, you know, change the number of them. But let's say I like something like this. I'm going to go to once I'm happy with it, I'm going to go to sub tool and just do a split of on mass points, right? Now they're going to be by themselves. And I definitely want to have these on both sides. But before I do, I can do control D to subdivide them a few times. I can also grab my move, turn the active symmetry off. And I can, of course, uh, decide how deep I want them to be inside my cylinder. Maybe something like this is perfect. Uh, very cool. I'm going to go to geometry, delete lower. And now let's just do a mirror and weld on X. Go to draw and let's take a look. Now you can see that those little uh, rivets are on both sides of the tire. I think I'm going to stop the video here, but I just wanted to show you how fun it is to use the combination of IMM brushes and Z modeler and very quickly create something that looks pretty awesome.
At this point, this could be a wheel for a robot or maybe a sci-fi car. You can also, of course, change the materials. Let's go to, uh, for example, the metal one. If I wanted to assign material to only specific parts of the mesh, what I can do is I, I can select the pieces that I want the material to be assigned to. For example, let's say I'm going to select this tire and I want to assign this dark one just to the tire part. What I can do is go to standard, activate my material button, and I'm going to go ahead and turn this all the way up and go ahead and assign a fill object. When I did fill object, you can see a little brush showed up and now this um, black material is assigned to, to the outer part of the wheel, which means if I tra uh, change my material to anything else, everything else is going to change, but the material for the outside is going to mean uh, stay black. If I wanted to change that, I can of course do fill object and that's going to uh, take care of that. If I wanted to have something, a different material, what I can do is I can assign this black one to every single part of um, all of my tools, or I guess sub tools. Let me go through and do that really quick. And now since that is assigned, I can choose something else. Let's say I want to do, I'm going to press Alt and select this shape inside. And let's say I want to change the material to be something else. Maybe I want it to be lighter. I'm going to select this uh, gel shader and do fill object. And now you can see the inner part of the material is gonna be different than the outer part. I can do the same thing with these rivets, hold on the old key, select this layer and do a fill object. And now I'm controlling the materials that are being assigned to different uh, parts of the mesh. All right, so I hope you learned a few new tricks. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in our next video.